Just how vast is the universe? Our current understanding of the scale of the universe dates back almost a hundred years to the 1920s. And the work of a relatively unknown female astronomer, Henrietta Swan Leavitt, was key to the advances made in that decade. Computers are very familiar devices today. But their name originates in an occupation that is now obsolete. Computers were originally people, mainly women, who were employed to perform repetitive and tedious calculations. Charles Edward Pickering at the Harvard College Observatory employed a team of about 80 women in the 1890s and early 20th century who were employed to perform astronomy calculations and Henrietta Swan Leavitt was one of Pickering's computers. Henrietta Swan Leavitt completed the Harvard degree course in June 1892 but because she was a woman she couldn't graduate with a BA. However she was given a certificate that said that had she been a man she would have graduated with a BA degree. She was almost deaf following a childhood illness but she was financially secure so she offered to work for Pickering at the observatory for free and he was delighted to take her on. She was later paid 30 cents a day or almost $10 a week. This sounds rather exploitative and demeaning but at the time Pickering was actually quite progressive in encouraging women to do this sort of work. The project that Pickering gave to Henrietta Swan Leavitt was to analyse the stars on photographic plates that had recently been taken at an observatory in Peru. These plates showed the stars of the small and large Magellanic clouds, large clusters of stars that we now know are dwarf galaxies orbiting the Milky Way galaxy. The Magellanic clouds were unknown to Europeans until Magellan's voyage around the world in the 16th century and that is why they are known as the Magellanic clouds. Leavitt's project was to study variable stars in the Magellanic clouds. Now many stars vary in brightness over a period of time. Some types of stars do this regularly and some do it in quite an unpredictable way. Now, Leavitt studied a type of variable star known as a Cepheid variable. These stars get their names from Delta Cephei which was the first example that was discovered. Now, Cepheid variables are very bright stars and they're quite rare stars but they vary in brightness regularly over a period of days. Delta Cephei itself we now know is at a distance of 880 light years and it varies in brightness regularly over a period of five days and nine hours. You might actually have seen a Cepheid variable because Polaris, the pole star or north star, is another example of a Cepheid variable and it's actually the closest example at a distance of 430 light years. And Polaris varies in luminosity over a period of about four days. When comparing the brightness of stars it isn't easy to tell whether a star is incredibly bright but at an immense distance or whether it's much fainter but relatively nearby. For instance, Sirius is the brightest star in the night sky, much brighter than the pole star. But we know today that Sirius is one of our closest stellar neighbours at a distance of about eight and a half light years. And the pole star is actually 50 times further away. If these two stars were situated at the same distance from us, then the pole star would be much the brighter of the two. 
When Leave It was working over a century ago, the distance to the small Magellanic Cloud was unknown. However, because the stars are so densely crowded together in the night sky, Leave It assumed that these stars lie at essentially the same distance from us. And this was very important because it means that the difference in brightness of the stars reflects true differences in their intrinsic luminosity. And Leave It was able to use this to show an important relationship for CFID variables. She showed that the brighter a CFID variable, the longer the period of time over which it varies in brightness. Henrietta Swan Leavitt discovered an interesting pattern in the variability of an obscure type of star. So what, you might say? But as she pointed out, her relationship could offer a measuring rod to the stars. CFID variables are particularly bright stars, so with powerful telescopes they can be observed at immense distances. And it's easy to measure the period of variability of a CFID variable, we just have to watch it for a period of time. And once its period is determined, this then enables us to use leave its period luminosity relationship to determine the intrinsic brightness of the star. And with this information, the intrinsic luminosity can be compared to how bright the star appears in the night sky, which enables us to work out just how far it is to the star. So, as Leavitt suggested, her period luminosity relationship could be used to determine a relative distance scale for the CFID variables. She referred to them as standard candles, which is a term that is still used today. It's necessary to calibrate the distance scale by measuring the distances to the nearby CFID variables such as Polaris and Delta Cephi. Today we know these distances quite accurately through satellites that have been launched by the European Space Agency. Hipparchus was launched in the 1990s and measured distances to about 100,000 nearby stars and currently Gaia is measuring the distances to about a billion stars in our vicinity. Leave its work did indeed lead to a revolution in our understanding of the scale of the universe. But unfortunately she died of stomach cancer in 1921 at the age of 53, just too soon to see this revolution come about. In 1924 Edwin Hubble found CFID variables in the Andromeda Nebula and use Leavitt's relationship to show that they are much more distant than any of the stars in our own galaxy and thereby demonstrated that the Andromeda Nebula is in fact a separate galaxy to our own. By the end of the decade Hubble had used Leavitt's standard candles to show that the Milky Way galaxy is just one amongst a vast number of other galaxies and indeed that the universe itself is expanding. Henrietta Swan Leavitt's discovery led to a total re-evaluation of the size of the universe. Her discovery still forms an important rung of the cosmic distance ladder, which is the scheme that is used to measure the size of the universe. We now know that it is 25,000 light years to the centre of our own Milky Way galaxy. But it is 2.3 million light years to the Andromeda galaxy, which is a separate galaxy of about the same size as our own. But the Andromeda galaxy is just a near neighbour. We can actually see galaxies that are now billions of light years away.
Henrietta Swan Leavitt never obtained a doctorate or an academic position. However, if she'd lived just a few more years, she almost certainly would have been nominated for a Nobel Prize. Many women have made important contributions to science and astronomy in particular, but they have been slow to receive the credit they deserve. You might be interested in a video that we made recently about another female astronomer, Celia Payne. You can access the video from the link that I'll copy into the description below. I'm Nicholas Mee and this is the Cosmic Mystery Tour. So if you've liked the video, please give us a thumbs up on the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And I look forward to seeing you again soon on the Cosmic Mystery Tour.